Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about the idea of parallel universes that apparently NASA discovered, where time runs backwards. So let's talk a little bit more about this discovery and welcome to What The Math. So a lot of people have been actually asking me to talk about this, but honestly I really really didn't want to. Mostly because it's kind of obvious that this is not true. But let's actually discuss this just so you can kind of see what really happened and why maybe the tabloids decided to pick up and go with this particular headline. But most importantly about the actual study and the actual discovery coming from the paper that's described in these unusual headlines. And don't get me wrong, parallel universes are super cool. I mean, we are pretty sure they exist, we just don't actually have any physical proof. Except for, of course, the theories coming from the quantum mechanics. But to try to understand what's happening in the study, I actually have to kind of take baby steps here and start by briefly telling you about neutrinos. Neutrinos, surprisingly, are some of the most, if not the most, abundant particles in the universe. There are a lot of them everywhere. Right now, if you're basically to kind of lift your hand and put it up right like this, every single second, approximately 1 trillion neutrinos goes through it. But the thing is, you don't really feel it. Mostly because these aneuro particles only seem to do two things. They produce a little bit of gravity, and they also are able to interact with the weak gravitational force. But they do not interact with particles in any other way. They're also extremely light in mass, and we think they move really close to the speed of light, possibly even at the speed of light. And their name, neutrino, stems from the idea that they're essentially neutral, they don't have any charge, and originally they were supposed to be named neutron, but then the neutron was found and got that name. So because neutrinos are so much smaller and also have so little mass, they were given the much cuter name neutrino. And there is still quite a lot of mystery behind them, Mostly because, like I said before, they don't interact with matter in a regular way, they seem to pass through most of the matter and produce only very very few interactions. But I guess the question here is also where do they come from? And originally we predicted neutrinos to be formed as a result of various nuclear reactions and in case of our planet Earth, the vast majority of neutrinos, of course, come from our Sun. Since this is the most powerful nuclear reactor in the vicinity of planet Earth, this also produces the most neutrinos. And this is something we've known for a fact for a very long time and something we can easily prove today and detect everywhere. Although obviously some neutrinos come from other events such as events related to black holes or supernova. And because neutrinos do not interact with matter almost at all, they generally pass through like for example nebula or a lot of other interstellar gas without them being stopped by anything and because of this we can usually detect supernova or any other really powerful events really easily even from billions and billions of light years away from us. In other words, neutrinos today are actually used as kind of detectors of powerful events. At the same time, they can also be used for other means, and some of the recent scientific experiments have even been able to allow uh, for communication using neutrinos. Specifically, the scientists have actually used a really, really thick piece of rock that was roughly around 800 feet in diameter, and they were able to send a neutrino from one end to the other, passing through the rock, and allowing for a very unusual way to communicate by using neutrinos where no other means of communications would work. Because no radio waves and no other waves can pass through rock as easily. So in that sense, neutrinos do have quite a lot of various uh, practical applications. But today we also want to know more about them by studying and detecting them on planet Earth and by trying to understand how they relate to other unusual events in the universe. And so because of this, the scientists produced an extremely large and probably the most unusual telescope on the planet, the so-called Ice Cube Neutrino Detector. This is located in Antarctica, mostly because there is very little interference in that particular region, and the way it works is by suspending these really, really long strands with detectors across the very vast region, there's like hundreds of them here, and um, each of the detectors is responsible for detecting the so-called Cherenkov radiation, which does occur in this case when a neutrino passes nearby because they're moving so extremely fast. In this case, it sort of looks like this. Here's a neutrino passing by, and as it passes through this region, the detectors will actually catch it and produce a kind of a line-like formation in their data. 
This has been detected many, many times, and so we know this actually works. This particular detector was able to detect a lot of really cool things, and the scientists even proposed adding another unusual detector known as ANITA, which is basically, in a nutshell, a kind of a balloon that floats around Antarctica and tries to catch the neutrinos coming from the other side basically from the ground. And so both IceCube and ANITA kind of work in unison in trying to detect as many neutrinos as possible. ANITA, or Antarctic Impulsive Transient Antenna, sort of looks like this. Obviously not as impressive as IceCube, but still pretty cool. But the main difference between the two is the way they detect the neutrinos. In the case of IceCube, it actually detects the interaction of neutrino with the atoms of hydrogen or oxygen, which then produces these effects. But ANITA is responsible for looking extremely high energy neutrinos that actually even produce radio waves coming from the ice underneath when they interact with the ice from within the planet. In other words, it's looking for the most powerful, most energetic neutrinos that will be either detected directly coming into the balloon or will reflect from the ice or might possibly even pass through the planet itself, at least through the uh, parts of the planet. But because ANITA is much smaller than IceCube, it also obviously does not detect as many neutrinos. As a matter of fact, there are very, very few detections and its actual uh, functionality has recently been kind of questioned. And generally speaking, for every single detection of an ANITA, the IceCube should have detected a lot more of similar events. In other words, um, whatever you find in ANITA should also be reflected in IceCube, because obviously the same neutrinos should be passing through IceCube as well. But the thing is, when the scientists were going through the data, such as this paper right here with quite a lot of authors attached to it, they found a few anomalous events inside ANITA that could not really be explained very well, mostly because they were extremely high in energy, and at the same time they were coming from essentially the other side of the planet, they were coming from within Earth. And these anomalous events happened at least twice and were not actually detected by the ice cube neutrino detector. The angle of detection in both of these cases suggested that whatever it was, it came from within the planet and was essentially coming through the planet, or at least that's what it appeared like. But at the same time, both events were also extremely powerful, these were some of the more powerful neutrinos detected, suggesting that they were originating from something extremely powerful like a black hole or possibly a supernova, but all of this was coming through the Earth, through our planet. And in some sense, this is almost impossible because these powerful neutrinos, first of all, should also be detected by ice cube, yet at the same time, could not possibly just pass through Earth like that. They would have been stopped by something and they would have interacted with at least something, at least according to all of the theories we have today. These detections created a bit of an anomaly, a neutrino coming from side of the planet, extremely powerful neutrino, without any explanation at least without any normal explanation. When the scientists tried to go to the data and then look in the direction where it possibly came from, they discovered that there was really nothing there that could have produced neutrinos. There were no supernova, there were no unusual black holes, nothing that would have explained these results very easily. And this of course created the mystery that then ended up in one of these headlines. But there were obviously a lot of explanations. One of them was that Anita may have malfunctioned. Because its data was not particularly useful to date, it's also been kind of questioned if this was a, even a useful experiment, and these anomalous events kind of added to that. So in other words, it could have actually not even been real. Or maybe something was actually happening to the ice itself, the Antarctic ice. It's quite possible that there are things going on inside the ice that cause these unusual particles to be produced, and so it's something unusual happening in Antarctica that we still just don't understand. And when I say unusual, I don't mean some kind of a secret nuclear reactor hidden underneath, please don't make this into a new headline. I mean something to do with the reactions inside of all of this huge amounts of ice in Antarctica that are causing these neutrinos to be produced. And then, essentially, as a kind of a side note, what the scientists behind this paper state is that astrophysical explanation of these anomalous events under standard model assumptions is severely constrained regardless of the source spectrum. In other words, what they're saying is that, under our current understanding of physics, it's somewhat difficult to explain what we observed. They don't say anything about parallel universes, or anything going back in time. All they're really saying, and this is actually directly from the IceCube Neutrino website itself, is that it's somewhat difficult to explain all these observations using modern physics. It just simply means that either we don't have enough data, or it's an error in the device, or maybe something is happening with the ice itself. And this is kind of where all of this stopped back in April of 2020. But then somehow, mysteriously, a month later, a lot of media articles started to come out 
with a completely misinterpreted idea behind the study and I think it's because of all of the boredom of quarantine and also the lack of big stories coming out in the last few months, simply because the world has been kind of shut down for months at a time now. And so this type of a headline then became this. And I guess, in a sense, this is a really good lesson in critical thinking. Honestly, media will always have these headlines and sometimes they'll be wrong. But at the same time, it's really important to understand that when something sounds a little bit too much, a little bit crazy, it's worth investigating this in a little bit more detail to try to find out if it's really true. I kind of right away knew that there was probably no parallel universe, no backwards time, none of this kind of made sense. And if it was actually detected, if somebody would truly find parallel universe with time running backwards, well, I th I'm pretty sure a lot of scientists would be talking about this right now. I have not seen a single scientist discuss this, except for as a joke, on Twitter. Actually, one of the really good explanations is from one of the scientists involved in the study, Alex Pizzuto, who posted this on Twitter and explained this really briefly in a few words. I'm posting the link to this in the description as well. So in a nutshell, well, what do we know about this? Nothing. It's an anomalous event, it's a strange detection, possibly an error in device. For all we know, it could be anything at this point. But definitely not parallel universe. Even though those might exist, just not the way we've detected them right now. But on that note, I guess we'll talk more about all of these unusual detections sometime in the future once we know a little bit more about what I need to discover it. For now, that's unfortunately it, and, well, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before, and maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon, it does help me quite a lot. Alternatively, you can also support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that you can also find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye. Oh no, now the media is going to say that there is a hidden nuclear reactor underneath ice. What have I done?